Welcome to the channel. Today we're doing a high miles review on a 2005 Chevy Silverado with the Duramax, the LLY, which is the most hated Duramax of them all, probably. And this one here has 199,000 miles, which isn't a ton for a diesel, but it still gives us a good idea of some of the problems that you might encounter if you're looking for a used truck. So we're gonna start off taking a walk around the outside, checking out common problems with the paint, rust, all those issues that you encounter with body stuff, and then we'll get into the engine and then we'll move to the interior. So as we move to the outside here, you'll see that this truck has rocker guards on it. And pretty much everybody knows this, but Chevy's anywhere but in the south, like <laughs> deep south, <laughs> pretty much rust through on the rockers, cab corners. One of the big issues is if you have one of these trucks is you'll find that under the fender flares, the fender flares are just absolutely terrible as far as trapping moisture causes a ton of rust and that is no different on this truck these rocker panels are probably covering up rust i mean they are and under here if you look under the fender you'll see that there is a lot of rust starting there as well as you can see some here and this is actually a fairly rust free example we're in pennsylvania but still have these common issues that you'd really just can't avoid unless you really rig rigorously get after it from new. So this truck was not a heavy work truck, but you'll even see that the top of the beds on these trucks, typically people strap to them and everything, and really they're not made out of heavy enough metal. Older trucks were, you could probably, you could really strap some good weight to, uh, to the top of the bed rails. These trucks are not that way anymore, unfortunately. So you'll see these bent up and dinged up, even on trucks that weren't like a hard working construction truck. Around the back end here, you'll see that our tailgate looks pretty nice. So this one was just painted, but from the factory, they uh, they do have some problems. One, you're going to lose this plastic piece. No matter what, this plastic piece is mi missing on just about every truck. They do have problems sometimes with getting a little bit of rust on the inside and the latches don't want to unlatch. The, one of the real common problems that you're going to have to replace is the hinges back here rust through on just about all of them on the driver's side you can actually see a little bit of rust bubbling up above the wheel well here and this one here does not have any of the rust on under the wheel well but we have rocker guards on this side as well so they're covering up rust and probably hiding some rust under the front as well and this does have brand new headlights on it the factory ones are going to fog up just like about any vehicle nowadays all your plastic will fade over time. That stuff's pretty typical, but you'll notice it on most of the trucks. Now, this truck was recently painted, so it's tough to say, you know, anything about the GM paint on this particular truck. But overall, I've noticed that the GM paint holds up decently well. The white ones especially, whatever's with the white color on their trucks, those ones have a little bit more of a uh, tendency to peel as well as I've seen some of the tans and other ones do it. I haven't seen it as much with black and some of the other colors, but... Overall, even before this was painted, the paint was still in pretty good shape. Now that we've taken a walk around the outside, let's start it up and see how this engine sounds. As you can see, this truck sounds like it's running really, really well. No noticeable noises other than just normal diesel sound and uh, has no known issues right now at all. This is the LLY Duramax engine, which is probably the most hated Duramax engine through all the years. The LB7, which came before, was prone to injector issues, but in 2004, they introduced the LLY, and the LLY ran through the beginning of 2006. This engine has 310 horsepower and 520 pound-feet of torque. However, they are very prone to head gasket issues. And by very prone, I mean you're going to hear about it a lot. Some people never have an issue with them at all, and others have issues pretty early on in their life. This one here, I don't know the history on, so I can't tell you whether or not it's had these, these issues or not, but it's definitely something you're going to want to look out for. And one of the nice things is it's pretty easy to detect. If the engine has gotten warm and you shut it off, 
and you come the next day and grab any of your hoses, your radiator hoses, they'll be very tight. And that's an indication that there's some pressure in there, which is caused by bad head gaskets. Other common issues include the injector wire harness has an issue with rubbing through, which is pretty easily rectified and not as much necessarily a problem, but the turbo mouthpiece, inlet mouthpiece, is very restrictive on these engines, but that can be swapped out as well without too much of a problem. One of the other things, which this is not a big deal, glow plugs used to be more of a, more of a big issue, but on these, it's not that big of a deal. They're cheap, you can replace them. We did replace one glow plug on this engine, which does mean that the others are probably getting pretty close to being need, needing to be replaced, but the glow plugs, you'll probably have them pop up, but they're not a big deal. One of the other things to check for when you're looking for one of these trucks is blow-by. Some trucks have it and you wouldn't really be able to tell why, just how it's running. But one of the easiest ways is when the engine is running, you open up your engine oil cap. You flip it over and put it on top right here. If there's any significant blow-by, this will fall off because it's pushing air up through. But this truck here we have tested and it runs perfect. No blow-by at all. That covers most of the common problems with the engine on these trucks. The transmission is really reliable in stock form. The Allison, this is a five speed. They switched up to a six speed later. Uh, this isn't quite as desirable because it is the five speed, but transmissions don't really have any super common problems unless you put a tune on them or doing some seriously heavy towing. They'll go into limp mode if you do those things, but we're talking about stock trucks here. And generally the Allison is very reliable. The other thing to look out for, which is not engine or transmission related, is front end issues. These are independent front suspension, which you probably hate if you're watching this video, but they have an independent front suspension, which is gonna be a little bit more common for ball joints, tie rod ends. GM put a tie rod on here that's about the size of one off of like a Kia Spectra, so you know they, they bend if you do anything real crazy with them. But you're gonna end up replacing a bunch of front end parts on these trucks after they get to the 100,000 mile mark or thereafter. Now that we've covered the engine issues, let's take a look at the interior. And as we move into the interior, you'll see that we actually have a pretty nice interior still, considering the age and mileage on it. Looks like a cigarette burn right there. These seats, if you're not careful, they will rub through and rip on the edges here after, you know, 100 to 200,000 miles. But the cloth is actually pretty decent on these this is very common people catch their clothes like pants on the end of this plastic piece and it rips off door panels really no issues too much with them uh, the only thing that i really know on these is when you have your window open at all if there if it rains or anything it drips down and goes into your window switches here and eventually will corrode the back of the window switches and cause you a bunch of problems with your power window switches but Luckily, every part for these trucks is pretty much cheap at this point, and you can get these switches fairly inexpensively. Now, inside here, you'll see as we sort of step in, headliners peeling here. That's another very common issue. It's peeling on that side as well. Steering wheel we actually replaced on this truck, and that's because the leather on them wears out, so that's a new steering wheel. The center console lids pretty much are all broken at this point of these trucks. Very common. They're all broken. And then the other thing that we did on the inside was replace the instrument cluster. It's very common on these trucks, especially from 03 to, I believe, 07, that the motors for all of your needles will go bad and go all sorts of haywire. So that's definitely something to look for, out for as well. Otherwise, on the inside, it's sort of cheap plastic, but you'll get some peeling paint, as you can see on the other edge of the cab over there, but no real big issues otherwise on the interior other than just you know mid 2000s gm plastic in the back area here you can see that we got some nice leg room we also are missing one of our little lights in the door which pretty much that's on every single one of them but no real issues that are common back here that i can think of at all otherwise most of the electronics everything like that work pretty well the four-wheel drive switch will go bad occasionally and the speakers from the factory pretty much suck unless you have the Bose ones. This truck did not, and you can actually see, if you look over there, a little reflection, these have been replaced. So the factory AC Delco ones, not great, but that I think pretty much covers interior issues. So that brings us pretty close to the end of our review here. And now I gotta answer the question, is this a buy or is this a bust? And frankly for me, it's a buy. 
Diesel trucks are kind of tough because so many have been used so hard and have so much aftermarket stuff done to them. It's actually tough to find a vehicle like this that hasn't had a bunch of work done to it at this point. But overall, these are good trucks and a lot of them have had a lot of the updates already done to them that rectify the common problems that we talked about. Obviously, check out to make sure you don't have bad head gaskets because that's going to be an expensive repair right off the bat. These trucks are running about the $10,000 or 10 to 12 probably, depending on where you are in the country, for a 200,000 mile LLY. You could also get the LBZ trucks, which is the 06 to 07, which are improved, especially with that six speed transmission, but you're going to pay a little bit more money for them. So if you don't need anything crazy, these are definitely a good option. And because they are the most hated Duramax, you can get them for a little bit cheaper. Now, I'm sure I've missed a bunch of different things throughout this review. So put any of those down in the comments below. I'd love to hear more about them. I'm not a, the biggest expert in the world on these trucks, but these are just a few of the things I've come across, especially since we've had this one. And as always, if you're in the market for one of these trucks or any truck or vehicle, don't take my word for it. Take it to a trusted mechanic that you have and have them check it out before you buy it. And with that, the review is over. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day.